Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. The Silver Market. How much more can it take? Let's explore. One may think that question to be somewhat premature. And by the way, I think it's premature. Because what we have been seeing for the last uh, um, half a month or so, maybe a little bit longer, is a general squeeze of the physical silver market. And so the question uh, that is before us is how much more can it take? I would make the argument that it can take much more, quite a bit more, which is why I have been encouraging folks that are buying silver to be patient and to accumulate um, at your uh, convenience. Really, literally, um, I would not make haste in this proposition, but any silver that you do buy it does remove it from the market. And that essentially means that uh, the price will eventually go up because of demand, supply and demand. It's a wonderful thing. It's, it's something that I believe is the most pronounced reason why a particular commodity uh, goes up in price. And by the way, I'm speaking of silver in this regard as a commodity. Although most in this community do understand that silver serves a higher role, I believe, and that is as money. Now, I look at it as as sort of hibernating money. It's not even really dormant money. It's kind of just a, a sleep there, um, um, waiting in the wings to wake up someday to potentially be used in some sort of uh, exchange um, as it has been for literally thousands of years. It's really only until recent history that silver is, um, has been removed um, from our currency. But uh, up until 1964 here in the United States and some other nations even longer, though it's somewhat debased. In other words, the amount of silver in coinage, uh, the percentage of silver has fallen to, you know, um, 72 percent or um, or 800 percent or, or, or 80 percent and the like. You know, this is but what we had here in the United States was 90 percent silver. And, of course, other nations have sterling silver in their coins. Um, but nonetheless, these days, no nation on earth uses precious metals in their currency of any sort. Um, but there could come a day when we may see a return to this, and it may not necessarily be in the form of silver coins, such as you see here, or metals, um, but it may be in related to technology. In other words, some sort of... Um, of, an, of a backed system using silver as a backing. Uh, the gold standard or a bimetallic standard with silver being a part. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. A ledger system being tracked through something such as Hashgraph or the blockchain. But, you know, we're a ways off from that, but it's already we're already seeing some cryptocurrencies and, and other assets already moving in that direction, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that that could be something to come in the future. But nonetheless, the faith in that system is something that uh, people will always question, for sure, because people are questioning the general silver market. In fact, all the commodities, the largest ones, six or eight that are the biggest commodities that are being traded, are coming into question. One silversmith shared with me an article on an interview that was conducted on Palisades Gold Radio. Um, and I very rarely uh, take time to listen to a whole interview or a whole segment uh, based off of what people's opinions are on the silver market because a lot of them tend to be overly bullish and overpromise. In fact, this title was a big turnoff to me uh, because and this thing is about silver price is about to blow sky high. Well, we've been hearing that for since I've ever been since I've been in this community. We've heard that time and time again. It's just a matter of time. And in fact, that message is pretty consistent in this interview, um, saying that it's just about a time. This thing is about to break, and it can't take much more because of all that's going on. 
And uh, But this particular uh, person, Ed Steer, who also piggybacks on what Ted Butler says. Ted Butler, as you know, I've covered some of his uh, work on this channel as well, too, about what I refer to as my macro price manipulation of the silver market, um, which I don't believe in, and I still uh, question it greatly. Um, and then there's micro price manipulation of the silver market and gold and other commodities. Nonetheless, it should go um, with the understanding that I do believe there is manipulation in all the commodities. But the top six or eight are the ones that uh, typically are uh, highly concentrated on. And that includes silver, platinum, gold, and coffee. You know, and then you've got sugar, coca, very um, obviously very common. And then there's other copper as well. But we're not seeing some of these uh, commitment of trades with copper that you're seeing with gold, platinum, and silver. Platinum being right behind silver. Uh, from the uh, biggest traders of, uh, of, of the banks. You know, these, uh, these are largest traders versus short traders um, of these commodities here. And silver is at the top. And I think that is mainly because we are starting to see great demand for the physical, not only uh, in the industrial sector as we ramp up with green energy and uh, EVs, solar, photovoltaic, and uh, biomedical, industrial, or technological as well, but also in the uh, the markets themselves. And this fella, Ed Steer, makes probably the best case that I've heard yet for macro price manipulation. Essentially, what it is is these the size of these short positions, um, which means they don't really own, but they're uh, betting that the price is going to normalize or come back down or stay where it is now as opposed, as opposed to the long positions where people take ownership of a stock um, such as SLV or PSLV. And the concentration now is in PSLV, which is um, Eric Sprott's um, organization, which is uh, closely more closely tied to the physical market than SLV, which is JP Morgan's outfit. And obviously, you've heard me cover on this channel the uh, SLV and also JP Morgan and evidence and news stories of what I refer to again as micro price manipulation, which is where the price of silver or gold or platinum or, what, or any precious metal is, uh, is essentially manipulated up or down based off of the selfish intent of those engaged in the trading from within an organization. Although Ed Steer makes the argument that there is a, um, a conspiracy between um, these largest bullion banks on the COMEX and that the delivery is about to come to a head in March. But we've heard that before too. We've heard, hey, they can't make this particular month of delivery. They're not going to have enough. So they will have to do leasing and play these games and make it happen. Well, have they been doing that in the past? Perhaps so. But it survived for this long. How much longer can it take if that's indeed what's happening? I don't know. There's a lot of complexity in the commitment of trader reports that are released by law. They don't, they don't tell the full story. And I think there's a lot of room for interpretation there that obviously can be interpreted as nefarious um, uh, motivations for the market. So... In the end, and if you watch this video, and I encourage you all to watch this video because it's providing a contrary position to what I hold, and I listened to it and was quite compelled by it, but I think we need more information, and we should not take it for a grain of salt, even though it's very well articulated and well uh, brought out. In fact, you listen to this interview, you, you very well may be convinced more than ever that there is macro price manipulation. In the end, no matter what you believe, whether you believe that there's not manipulation, such as myself, I've not seen enough evidence to really prove it, it, um, that it is happening to the level that Ed Steer claims or Ted Butler, Butler uh, claims, um, or not. The more people that buy silver, the more demand that there will be. And the more demand that silver is on the industrial side, 
and we all know the charts there. Well over 50% of silver's uh, use is in uh, industry, which includes technology, uh, the biomedical field, um, all sorts of, of areas there. Very diverse uses for silver as a commodity. So the more we see of this, uh, and the more people that hold it and take it out of the system, more likely it is to go up um, in price. Will it explode? Will it blow sky high? I don't know. You know, um, could we have another 2011 situation, another 1980 situation? Probably not exactly. There may be other factors that can move the price upwards for a time. But everybody that accumulates silver, there are going to be some of those who will sell it back, even though either when the price does go uh, to a greater extent, like let's say forty dollars an ounce, some may say, "Well, I'm out, I'm I'm selling," and then some of those may be disappointed when they don't get their premium back because there's enough people selling silver and that could bring the market back down. That's the thing about the free market; uh, its supply and demand can have a great impact on the price. And I believe in natural market forces. I believe they play a much larger role and they should not be underestimated. Right now, there are natural market forces at play, especially with organizations like Wall Street Silver and many others in this community who are accumulating more silver now. And I've always been one of those that buys and hold. You've seen me show some old silver on this, um, on this channel. A lot of that silver I bought in the 90s and in the 2000s, and I've held on to it for all these years. I'm a buy and hold guy. I hold it for the long haul. You got to be patient with silver. So how much more can it take? I don't know. I wouldn't begin to guess, but my guess is it's probably longer than what some of these prognosticators think. And in that case, I would encourage you to be patient and to accumulate as you feel comfortable, as you understand the silver market. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Ed Steer's word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Do your own due diligence. Look at the situation. The market's very complex, um, much more complex than a GameStop uh, share or squeeze position. There's a lot going on here um, in, in silver, gold, platinum, and these other metals and other commodities as well. Don't be disappointed if some of these uh, predictions don't come true. Hold on for the long term. And I would also encourage you to diversify from within precious metals and accumulate some gold as well. To me, it's a safer bet. Although, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a little bit more silver too. You know, it doesn't hurt. I think as long as you understand it, you grab a little bit more. I do have an order that I placed uh, a little while ago. Some of it's somewhat collectible silver, but nonetheless, hey, why not get a little bit and see what happens and uh, but don't expect too much and don't be disappointed if it doesn't work out the way that some of these people think so i hope you found this video encouraging we'll see where it goes i would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate share comment and subscribe